Since you're a person of interest, let me ask you this. Did you do something with her? No. Did you kidnap her? No. Did you sexually assault her? I did not. Did you murder her? I did not. No, I did not. Did you murder her? I did not. I did not. I was murdered and my body was concealed. I was drugged and rendered unconscious. It is a heartbreaking story that seemed like a descent into hell, with no escape in sight. If you don't have the courage, quickly scroll past this video, as the following story is incredibly horrifying. This is my story at the age of 19. In my spirit, unhealed wounds were once again torn open as painful memories flooded back. I, Kania Monge, was a 19-year-old full of life and dreams, oblivious of the monstrous nightmare that lay in wait. It started as an ordinary night in Denver, Colorado, when I decided to head out for a fun girls' night. I left my purse and my belongings behind, an action that would later alarm my boyfriend and sister, setting the stage for the terrifying events that were to unfold. As the night progressed, my defenses were weakened by an unusual intoxication, making me an easy prey to a cruel predator who lurked in the shadows. A man named Travis, later to be known as the Bleach Monster. He spun a bizarre tale about me willingly getting into his van and requesting to stop at a gas station before I mysteriously disappeared. Unknown to me, the world outside was frantically searching, my father even confronting Travis, whose handshake sent chills down his spine. The stench of bleach in his apartment haunted those who searched for me, yet no tangible evidence was found. With every passing day, the search for me turned more desperate, the investigators tirelessly coming through every lead. I wish I could have warned Lydia Tillman, another victim who bravely survived an attack from Travis. Her attack shed light on his horrific modus operandi, the use of bleach and fire, triggering the police to connect the dots that led back to him. She managed to escape, but not without paying a heavy price the physical ordeal causing her to suffer a stroke. The authorities did all they could, even keeping Travis under surveillance in fear of him striking again. It felt as though divine intervention came in the form of the DNA test results, which arrived just in time to prevent his release. Travis' reign of terror was finally put to an end, but my whereabouts remained a mystery. In his desperation, my father wrote to Travis, pleading for a chance to give me a proper burial. His heartfelt plea moved Travis, who eventually led the police to my remains. The closure brought little comfort, the wound too deep, the loss immeasurable. As I look down at the world I left behind, I urge you all to be vigilant, to look out for one another, and to never take your safety for granted. It's through God's grace that I have found peace that I have been pulled out from the depths of my suffering. Meeting the Lord was a profound experience, His divine love and compassion radiating from His very being. He soothed my tormented spirit, wiped my tears, and promised me eternal peace. In death, I learned the true essence of resilience and strength, the power of love and forgiveness. As you navigate through your journey, remember to be kind, to love one another, and to remember my story, not as a tale of a victim, but as a testament to the human spirit's ability to rise above even the darkest of times. Be safe, cherish your loved ones, and know that God's grace is always within reach.